Hi, welcome to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. This is where we talk about all things tech, entrepreneurship, innovation, and manufacturing. And there's so much going on in Hawaii that this is the place to find out all about it. And oh, if you want to reach us, if you have any questions, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI. And we'll be addressing those questions, if there are any, after the breaks. Um, so my guests today are Shannon Eady and Daphne Tong Pave, President and Vice President, respectively, of Holomua Consulting Group. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. I'm so excited. Um, I think because your company offers a valuable service to Hawaii, it's a, it's a, it's a neat niche that hopefully I want to let more people know about. So maybe tell everybody what Holomua Group is and how I got started. No problem. So. Daphne and I met when we were working at Pelotron. Mm -hmm. Pelotron is a local company. They started off as an um, R&D engineering firm and sort of morphed into light manufacturing and assembly. Hmm. And I was their general counsel and Daphne was compliance officer. And so obviously we worked a lot together on projects. Mm -hmm. And through our work, we came to realize that there is a large need here locally for someone to do what we do, which is provide consulting services to federal contractors hmm. and um, companies that want to get into federal contracting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So did people actually reach out to you? Like while you were with Pelotron? Or how yeah. Did you <laughs> yeah, so actually when we were at Pelotron, uh, we helped to get three of their sister companies certified oh, in the Small Business Administration 8A program. Um, as a Native Hawaiian organization. Mm -hmm. But while we were doing with that, the executive management team would encourage us to meet with people who was interested in pursuing you know, these small business programs. Wow. Yeah. So when we were doing that, we realized, hey, there's a need. <laughs> we can do this. Why don't we you know, do it on our own? Um, so we split off from Pelotron in January of this year and have been providing services since then. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. That's amazing that Pelotron supports that kind of effort. Yeah, they are very supportive of us. They are majority owned by a nonprofit called yeah. Pelotron Center for Economic Development. And their mission is to encourage uh, Native Hawaiian entrepreneurship. Wow. So they definitely take a risk by you know, encouraging their employees and um, sister company employees to go off and start, start their own businesses. But we're very lucky that we're able to benefit from, from that support. Yeah. yeah. And so when you were thinking about split, splitting off from Peloton, are there a lot of companies in Hawaii that do federal work? Like, I mean, you thought that it was enough to do a business around it? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential work in Hawaii, particularly with the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. um, but true. yeah, we definitely see a need in Hawaii to kind of be more educated about the federal contracting opportunities as mm -hmm. well as programs available to small businesses that kind of help them get into the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that want to do federal work. I think there are a lot that want to do federal work and some that are capable of doing it, but maybe don't know that they should be or that these opportunities <laughs> yeah. exist. Oh. So I think there is a tendency to think of just like the really large companies as government contractors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reality mm -hmm. is that the federal government wants to do business with small businesses. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they have small business contracting goals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So 23% of all federal contracting dollars, the goal is that those dollars will go to small businesses. 23%? 23%, yes. Wow. So um, there are tremendous opportunities for small businesses. That's amazing. And yeah. part of what we try to do is educate businesses on those opportunities, how to find them, mm -hmm. and how to obtain them. Wow. I didn't, I didn't realize it was that big, 23%. I mean, are they hard goals? Like, if you, you have to hit them? Or they, that's just like, oh, let's try to hit this? Like, are there consequences for agencies that don't? There, there are consequences. There are huh, increased reporting requirements that they will be subject to. So mm. um, hmm. the agencies generally really want to meet those goals. And that's I good. think the announcement was that the government did meet the 23% goal wow. for this year. They also met it last year. Um, but before that, they had not met it for... I think it was eight years wow. before that. 
Yeah, so That's every great. year the government puts out a report that says whether or not they've met their specific goals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so they're congressionally mandated goals as well. So like Shannon said, even though the reporting you know, requirements increase, they're definitely, the agencies do want to meet their small mm -hmm. business goals. So wow. they put a lot of effort into doing that. That's good. Yeah. And so it's just, you guys help companies realize that there are there are agencies that want to work with them. They just have to be ready to. Exactly. And the goals actually flow down to the prime contractors as well. So the government does sort of try to hold large businesses accountable in terms of subcontracting work to small businesses also. So there's a lot of opportunity in that respect as well. I see. So subcontracting small businesses also helps towards that 23%. Yes, exactly. Oh, very good. That's good. And then I noticed on your website, you guys offer a lot of services. And is it just the two of you? <laughs> <laughs> it is it's just the two do. of us. Yeah, <laughs> we're realizing that there's a lot to do mm -hmm. in addition to kind of running the day-to-day the -day operations of the firm. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I give you guys credit. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, what kind of companies are you looking for? Like what, like if I'm a company out there and I'm listening to this show, how do I know that this would apply to me? So it, it's a range, I think, of businesses, either startups that are looking at eventually getting into federal contracting or you know, have the capacity to get into federal contracting or want more information about mm -hmm. what federal contracting is, what the government is buying, how they're buying it, to more established companies that maybe are already doing federal contracting but kind of need assistance with compliance issues. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of employment requirements that companies need to you know, um, abide by that Shannon has mm -hmm. a lot of expertise in that she can help with. Um, so it's a variety, I think, uh, of clients that we can serve. Yeah. And I would just add that, yeah, I mean, as Daphne said, we, we definitely can help companies that aren't actually even companies yet. Mm. It's just a thought. Mm -hmm. However, we need those types of clients to understand that it's going to take a, real, you know, a longer period of time for us to work with them mm -hmm. before they can reach a point where they might be in a position to get federal contracts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the kinds of companies that you know, are able to, we're able to work with quicker are going to be ones that have at least two years of experience or mm -hmm. they've been in business for two years mm -hmm. and they sort of have a focus area and, and you'd be surprised we get people that come to us all the time and they say hey we want to get federal contracts and we'll say okay well what is it that you do and they don't really have a clear answer like, what is <laughs> the federal just government buying? <laughs> how, do, how do we sell that <laughs> wow yeah. Yeah. so we, we definitely get a range, but um, huh. like I said, the, the companies that we're going to be able to work with quicker are going to mm -hmm. be the ones that have some experience mm -hmm. and kind of know what it is that they're, they're selling. Mm -hmm. And you guys have an idea of what the federal government is looking for as well, so you can kind of recommend... Yeah, and we can help. You know, one of the, the first things we do with our clients is kind of figure out what they're doing um, and help <laughs> them with their market research, like I said, to figure mm -hmm. out what the government mm -hmm. is buying, if they're buying the services or products that this company is providing mm -hmm. and how they're purchasing it. Um, so a lot of, we do a lot of analysis up front so that we can help, you know, better direct them mm -hmm. um, either in a small business program or just, you know, federal contracting in general. I think some people come to us also saying, hey, I know that the government buys this because I know someone who said they had a contract, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I don't have any information about it. And so we'll help them sort of do, as Daphne mentioned, the research and the mm -hmm, investigation mm -hmm. about that. Okay. And do you see both like services and products? Or do you see one more than the other? Right now, I think we're seeing mostly services. services yeah. Mm -hmm. Construction. Mm -hmm. engineering those types of services but we definitely have um, other clients that we work with that sell products to the government okay so and I guess when I hear federal contracts I think of a lot of work and how does that work for like say a small business I just feel like how do you feel like you're capable <laughs> of getting a federal contract right. well I think Federal contracts come in all shapes and sizes. So they do have smaller size they contracts. They do, yes. Okay, that's good. Sometimes what I think what people don't necessarily realize is that they may get a contract, mm -hmm. but then that actually doesn't commit the government to buying anything from them. 
So they can have this overarching contract and then the government will issue what's called a task order mm -hmm. under the contract. Mm -hmm. And the task order is really the specific um, amounts. So just because you have a contract also doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get any work or the, the government's going to buy anything from you. But um, uh, wow. companies that get contracts often um, will hire contract workers to assist them perform the work. OK. OK. And so if you do have one of these contracts, do you still have to keep marketing yourself to get a task order? Or is it just you sit back and you wait, and they'll just pick you? So normally in those instances, the, the government would then release another request for proposal or, um, you know. Oh, so you are still? Yes. Yeah. It's still an <laughs> working active process. At it. it's, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, we've, we've discussed this before, but just federal government contracting in general, even if you're participating in small business programs, mm -hmm. it's not a golden ticket. You're not going to automatically get, get work. work or revenue, you know, so it's a lot of work going into it and knowing that you need to market, you need to, you know, establish relationships, um, mm -hmm. foster relationships, continually, you know, communicate with the government. Um, that is a large part of being successful in federal contracting. So getting that um, 8A is kind of like a, like a bonus point or something on your <laughs> proposal or yeah. yes definitely um, <laughs> yeah so it makes you more attractive like Shannon said the government wants to meet their small business goals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they also have goals for the different categories of small business programs so the um, small disadvantaged businesses which is mm -hmm. the 8a that they fall under that um, I think it's is it three or five percent um, so I think it's five percent five percent so the government you know wants to find companies that are in these programs so mm -hmm. that they can meet the goals in those specific categories. And what are the different categories for those of us that don't know, like I don't know. So it's um, <laughs> Hub Zone, which are historically <laughs> underutilized business zones. Um, they have the Women Owned Small Business Program. They have the Small Disadvantaged Business, which is the 8A. And then they have a Service Disabled Veteran Owned Small Business wow. Program. Yeah. And they're all, they all have some similarities. The requirements are generally going to be different. But in terms of the benefits, they all sort of are similar in terms of they all give you that extra point mm -hmm. and make you more attractive to the government. So if you can have more than one, then that makes it's you like even more, more attractive. Bonus exactly. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So as Shannon mentioned too, it's not just to the government though, to mm -hmm. prime contracts as well, because they have goals that they need to meet. So, so they can check off those boxes. Exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, interesting. Huh. So that's good to know. So women owned, is that 51% or? Mm -hmm. Yes. Aloha. Which are they owned and controlled by? Okay. And then what qualifies as a disadvantaged business? So, so for the 8A, um, the SBA has basically established thresholds. Um, of revenue? So, um, for personal net worth. So it's oh. individuals. So wow. the individual mm -hmm. owners of the companies need to be economically disadvantaged, which means initially having a personal net worth under 250000 Hmm. And then that goes up after you get into the program to 750. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. It is. Oh, interesting. I guess this is once yeah. you start getting work. Yes. And that's the assumption. It, the <laughs> assumption, yes, is that you know you will start to be hopefully become more <laughs> successful. In which case, your net worth will go up. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the AD huh. program is probably one of the more difficult. Um, application processes um, mm -hmm. of the four different programs. Um, the four main requirements are being socially and economically disadvantaged. The wow. business needs to be small. You need to demonstrate potential for success. So having two years oh of business. And then you need to have good character. So the application can be very, it's like a book. Wow. <laughs> and the SBA will, will dig. Yeah, and they'll have follow-up oh questions. So the process is And it sounds like long. it gets personal for that one. Like it, does. it does because <laughs> they, they definitely utilize third party sources to go out and collect information on out. the applicants. Exactly. Wow. So um, hmm. it, once you submit the application, that's not the end of the story, right? The SBA will come back with questions and, you know, they're just trying to do their due diligence mm -hmm. on the applicants to make sure that these are actually qualified individuals. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say qualified, I mean they meet all the requirements for the program. So, mm -hmm. so people don't take it back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And there's a long history of people taking advantage mm -hmm. of the program. So oh, they, so like, they put in that, all these. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it has definitely, there have been negative publicity 
about the program, which is unfortunate. Mm. And so because there are a lot mm. of people that are actually doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So that's just why the application process is it's so, so strenuous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's it. <laughs> And so kind of to build on that, though, uh, it's a nine-year program, um, and every the, year... The 8A program. The 8A yeah. program is a nine-year program, and every year they need to do what's called an annual review. So they need to um, tell the SBA that they're still meeting the mm -hmm. eligibility criteria. Um, so it's basically like submitting an application all over again. You need to provide the personal financial and, um, you know, information about the business. So um, it's a lot, yeah. So that's one of the reasons why we yeah, kind of... Yeah, and so you're yeah, that company's yeah. best friend. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's perfect. Yeah. Holy cow. So, so if they end up being amazingly successful, then they could just fall out of that category. Is that right? Yes. That's what it sounds like. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So at the nine-year point, if you've met all of your goals, so one of the other things that's required is you do a business plan and you establish your goals in that business plan and SBA will monitor whether or not you've met mm -hmm. those goals. Um, so at, at the mm -hmm. end of the nine-year term, if you have you know, successfully met those goals, then you, are gradu then you graduate from the program. If you meet those goals <laughs> earlier, then they could initiate early graduation proceedings. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, interesting. But yeah. I guess that's good. That's it a is. good outcome. It, yeah. It's not bad. And, mm -hmm. and when we do workshops, you know, I, I tell people, I'm like, well, if you are meeting all your goals and you do early graduation, that's not necessarily a bad mm -hmm. thing. It just, it means you're successful, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it, it just means you're not going to be able to take advantage of the 8A program. But then even, so even if you're not successful taking advantage of it, you still graduate out at nine years? Yes. <laughs> so there, there isn't really any sort of um, time stoppage, you know, just because you're not getting any any contracts. Mm -hmm. The nine-year program keep you will in run. Years. Yes. Ah, okay. So interesting. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, okay. um, and we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, and this is High Growth with HTDC. My guests today are Shannon Edie and Daphne pa Tong Pave of Holomua Consulting Group, and we'll be right back. Thanks. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and of course you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, uh, uh, actors, of course. And we don't on only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. Okay. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC on Think Tech Hawaii. And I wanted to let everybody know what's going on with tech and entrepreneurship and startups. So tonight, July 14th at 5 to 7 p.m., Accelerate UH, which is the UH Accelerator Program, they'll be having an info session to talk story with the alumni teams and mentors. Accelerate UH is a UH-affiliated accelerator program to catalyze commercialization of UH university technology. Learn more about applying for Cohort 3, whether you're actively working on a startup, looking for a team, or just want to check things out. Come on down. It's going to be at the Accelerate UH headquarters at 900 Fort Street Mall, Suite 1888. F free poo-poos and drinks. So that sounds like a good deal. Um, Thursday, July 18th, that's this Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m., the Star Foundry will be teaching anybody who's interested how to build your own app. This is going to be session two of four hands-on workshops at the Proto Hub to give you the right tools to launch a modern web app. That sounds very useful. July 23rd, the HBCA is having their July luncheon from 11.30 to 1.30 at the Plaza Club, focusing on venture accelerators in Hawaii. What have these programs done in the past, and what are they doing now to grow the innovation sector and talent pool in Hawaii? Why is this so important? Learn the answers to these questions and more at the HBCA luncheon. Also on July 23rd, 
is the summer edition of the Entrepreneurs Foundation of Hawaii Poopoos and Pitches from 5.30 to 9 p.m. at the Proto Hub. Come listen to Mentors Guild, Shifted Energy, and Board.Vote to pitch to an investor panel including Lisa Kleisner of KL Felicitas Foundation and Hawaii Investment Ready, Richard Lim of Tradewind Capital Group, and Steve Kosky of SPK Ventures. So that's always interesting. Poopoos and Pitches is a good event. So that's also on July 23rd. July 29th this month will be Wetware Wednesday. And it's going to be called Foodware Wednesday this month. It's going to be at Dave & Buster's from 6 to 8 p.m. We are joining forces with the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii and the Food and Beverage Manufacturing Group. I'm excited to see the conversation sparked at this event. There's so many ways this industry can take advantage of different online tools and apps to grow their businesses. And I think everybody can learn from everybody else's business. So it's going to be a great event. Check it out, July 29th. Don't forget, if you need some small, quick small business legal advice, every other Wednesday, HTDC offers free legal guidance in partnership with the Business Law Corps. You can sign up for a 30-minute appointment at the Manoa Innovation Center. Please visit htdc.org slash legal to sign up for your free 30-minute appointment. Lastly, calling all SBIR Phase 1 and Phase 2 and Phase 3 winners. HTDC offers the state matching fund for up to 50% of your SBIR awards. If that's you, please contact us at sbir at htdc.org. That's a lot going on this month. <laughs> and now we are back to our guests. My guests today are Shannon Edie and Daphne Tong Pave of Holomua Consulting Group. Um, so, you guys are a startup, pretty much. <laughs> we are. Yeah. yeah. What What has been your biggest challenge so far, being a startup? I think one of the largest challenges, as you mentioned earlier, uh, based on our website, we do offer a number <laughs> of different services. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to doing that and you know providing services to our clients, we have to run the day-to-day -day operation. So mm -hmm. Shannon has kind of learned the <laughs> social media. You know, yeah, somebody has to be out there marketing. Exactly. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and we've you know we really like to attend educational and professional workshops. Mm -hmm. um, Shannon has um, gone to a couple um, this year on the mainland, mm -hmm. um, the National AA Conference in Florida and Alaska. Wow. Um, so it's just managing our time and, you know, providing services to our clients mm -hmm. um, and trying to market and grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I mean, we, we definitely, unfortunately, can't be everywhere <laughs> all at one time. And, you know, we definitely want to bring other people on eventually, but, you know, our clients hire us because they want us. Mm. So it's very, it sounds very personal. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. Wow. So your hiring is going to be a process, like just <laughs> finding yeah. the right people. Yeah. We've been talking about great. it. Yeah. So yeah, finding the right person, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. like because it's such a specialized niche mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. I mean, I think the strategy that we're going to go with is to bring somebody on probably that doesn't have a lot of experience in government contracting, but someone that wants to learn about mm -hmm. it, has an interest in it, just because we're we're realistic about the fact that not many people here are going to be <laughs> yeah. experienced and know about government contracting. But I would think it's somebody with the personality that you're looking for, right? Like somebody that's... Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> because there's um, just so much to get done. There is, yeah. and then Daphne and I, you know, mm -hmm. are very similar in our personalities. I think that's why we get along so well. So maybe we don't want someone like us. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody different. Yes. Somebody, yeah, thinks differently. Yeah. Well, good. That's yeah. good. Um, but it sounds like you kind of hit the ground running, like with customers and everything, which is great. Yeah. And. And did you base your offerings on what your clients wanted? or I mean, that's what it kind of sounds like you kind of had an idea of what people needed already. Right. So we were very fortunate, as Shannon mentioned earlier, we were previously with Pelotron. So when we split off, we kind of already had a client base because Pelotron has um, three other sister companies that are in the AA program. And we also provide services to their parent nonprofit, the Pelotron Center for Economic Development. Um, and then we've just been getting, primarily through word of mouth, additional clients. Um, and in terms of service offerings, um, because we already have this established relationship with, you know, Pelotron and their mm -hmm. other sister companies, 
um, it's kind of like they'll call us like, can you guys do this for us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay, we can figure it out. So, <laughs> and then you add it on to your list right, of services. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's actually very flattering because, you know, even other clients outside of, of those companies, you know, they'll, they'll hire us for something and then, you know, maybe a month later say, hey, <laughs> can you guys do this? And, you know, Daphne and I will say, well, <laughs> we, we can do it. You know, I mean, we, we, we try to always be very candid with our clients and mm -hmm, say, mm -hmm. well, we've not actually done that before, perhaps, but the fact that they yeah. want us to, mm -hmm. you know, they have faith in us and they actually want us to mm -hmm. try it mm -hmm. is very flattering and, and we're yes. happy about that. Yeah. That's great. And then, I mean, it helps you also find out what the needs are. Because I'm sure if your customer needs it, there must be other people yeah. out there yeah. that need that same service. Right. So when we started, too, we were not sure if we could sustain a business by just doing applications. Um, so as we started going, we realized that education was a huge piece. Mm. So we started offering workshops every other month, kind of building a foundation, starting with just general federal contracting and, oh, and then focusing on specific issues. But yeah, as we you know get more into it, we're definitely realizing what our clients need and kind of tailing our services to kind of meet those needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm sure you guys learn a lot from just your workshops and who shows up at your workshops. Yes. We definitely yeah. get a wide range of individuals that, that come to our workshop. Some just because a friend of theirs said, hey, these two, you should check it out. this company is really great. They can help you. You should just <laughs> check it out. So we, we definitely get a wide variety of individuals that come to us mm -hmm, at our mm -hmm. workshops and just generally to set up appointments. Oh, well, that's great. That's good. <laughs> and I think like you said, it's, I think a lot of times people don't even know that they could be doing federal work. Yes. Right. So I think, yeah, probably education is um, half the battle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, that's great. And then you have information about your workshops on your site? We do have uh, a, an events page that we keep up to date with, with our workshops, and you can register. It contains the links to registration right on our website. OK, and it covers different topics. Yes. On so the conference. next one we have in, we're um, having is actually a webinar. It's the first time we're doing an online um, training session. So it's going to be on the 29th, nice. um, and it's going to be on the Hub Zone program. And we're trying to target that to the neighbor islands. So the neighbor islands are designated as Hub Zones. Mm -hmm. um, Oahu has pockets, so it's a little bit more difficult um, to apply mm -hmm. and qualify for the program. Um, so we think the neighbor islands are in a great position to kind of take advantage of that program. So mm -hmm. yeah, July 29th. Mm -hmm we have that. That's great. I'm going to blast that one out. <laughs> yeah. In the HubZone program, again, it's a, it's a contracting program similar to the others. Mm -hmm. um, but the government, as well as large prime contractors, historically are unable to meet their goals in this area just because it's very difficult to find companies that are HubZone certified. So as Daphne mentioned, because the outer islands are the entire island is designated as a hub zone, it uh, provides a great opportunity for neighbor island companies. So basically it's easier for them to call them. Yeah. Yes. So the, the two main criteria is that your principal office is located in a hub zone mm -hmm. and 35% of your employees need to live in a hub zone. So you can tell that meeting those criteria, it's, it's easier if the entire island is designated mm -hmm. as a hub zone versus yeah. Oahu where you have pockets so your employees may not. And people live all over the island. Yeah, exactly. People live all over the island and then there is always the risk here on Oahu for, you know, maybe next year for that same location to not be designated a hub zone any longer. So, Wow. Yeah. Or people move. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Do you think there's any chance that the neighbor islands would ever fall out of being a hub zone? Perhaps. I mean, maybe Maui, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the way they establish hub zone is basically congressionally mandated. So they mm -hmm. use data, housing data, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. labor, so, and it changes. It's not, you know, every 10 years based on census data. It'll be updated more frequently than that. Oh, well, that's great. I'm going to let people know. It's, it's great that you're using technology to help, to help the neighbor islands and to help get the word out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we attend a lot of webinars, you know, that mm -hmm. take place on the East Coast and all over the mainland. So mm -hmm. we thought 
you know, we could definitely try yeah, to do something here. Definitely. We wanted to reach the neighbor islands, and so mm -hmm. this will give us a good start. Mm -hmm. And the thing, too, I think just the information about federal contracting applies all over, mm -hmm. not just Hawaii, right? So yes. it's something that could reach a broader audience. Right. And if I could just make a quick point, so the benefit of being in the small business program, one of the many, um, are set aside opportunities and mm -hmm. sole source opportunities, depending on what program you're in. Mm -hmm. So set aside opportunities are basically contracts that are set aside for small businesses or a specific category of small businesses, meaning that it kind of the pool is smaller of the companies that you're competing against. So for they only company. look at companies with that classification. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then the sole source opportunity is basically the government saying, hey, I know you can do the work. I trust you. Um, so we'll give you this contract without putting it out for Wow. Them. Yeah. That's great. That <laughs> sounds like a relationship thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. it, it really is. And um, this year, women-owned small businesses have finally been given the opportunity to receive sole source contracts. That wasn't available that was not available to them. It wow. just was in the 2015 NDA, yeah. Hooray. National Defense Authorization Sheesh. Act. So I mean, a, a lot of the industry has been waiting for this. Great. And the SBA is right now in the process of the rulemaking mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. put this in motion. Good. So we're hoping by the end of the year, something will, will come out and wow. um, women-owned small businesses will be able to take advantage of the sole source opportunities. Wow, I can't believe it's only <laughs> this year. Yeah. That is crazy. Well, that's good. That is good news. Mm -hmm. I wanted to um, ask you, what do you see as the biggest challenge for Hawaii companies to do federal work or getting federal work? I think, like I mentioned, the the largest challenge is probably not realizing how much work goes into it up front especially mm. um, that you know you need to continuously market your company your products so your it's services. actually still just getting the work yes yeah. yes <laughs> um, and I think to a certain extent I mean a lot of the businesses once they get contracts are I mean there are some challenges especially if the contracts are large mm -hmm. to kind of you know grow um, properly and mm. um, have everything in place to find to, the workforce to yeah yeah hmm. and I would add that another challenge is making sure that you um, comply with the ongoing compliance requirements and and as you get bigger and as your contracts get larger the government tax on more and more, more compliance compliance obligations and it's very easy for companies to not know what those are because the government is not going to say, okay, here are the five things that you now need to comply mm -hmm. with. They're just going to expect that because they make a reference to the regulation <laughs> in the contract that you You'll are get it reading done. it and <laughs> understanding what it means. So wow. for a, a, an example I like to use is that um, there is a regulation for human trafficking and that companies with contracts over a certain dollar amount must have in place a compliance plan for dealing with any allegations of human trafficking. So it's wow. definitely a challenge and companies, especially smaller companies, can really get you know, into a lot of trouble if one of the agencies come knocking and says, we, we want to do an audit. Wow, so, and they don't have that. Exactly. So paperwork. that's that's kind of where we come in. We try to work with companies as they grow mm. and keep that's them informed of, of what they need to be doing. That's great. Do you still see geography as an issue for Hawaii companies to get federal work? Or, I mean, do most companies just work with the federal government that's here? Or do companies work nationwide? Actually, it's they work all over. Um, some of the larger companies that started here actually have contracts all over the country That's so great. it's geography is definitely not mm -hmm. as big of an issue I think as it was before mm -hmm. are people I mean is it is travel a lot of travel involved or is it more like you can get more stuff done with technology or both yeah, yeah I, I think, think it's, it's definitely both hmm well, it's good that's very good because I, I, I know for the longest time, Hawaii is like, well, we're in the middle of the ocean and right. it makes things harder. But right. I, and I think maybe companies that do work on the mainland, 
they kind of get into it knowing what they're getting into mm -hmm. and that maybe they will have to eat some of the travel costs that's that's involved mm -hmm. but definitely technology has played a huge role mm -hmm. in allowing that to happen mm -hmm. that's great that's very good we're going to take another quick break um this is think tech hawaii this is high growth with htdc i'm your host cindy matsuki and our guests today are shannon Edi and daphne tong pabe of holomua consulting group we'll be right back this is alice lee hagan host of think tech hawaii business education spotlight my show here at think tech hawaii is every thursday from three to four in the afternoon i bring in interesting guests from hawaii the mainland, and hopefully international guests in the future. Do join us on Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Aloha. Hi, I'm Chris Letham, and I'd like to invite you to come and watch my show every Wednesday at 3. I'm interested in a variety of issues that have to do with politics and our local business economy. And I'd like to bring on guests who like to talk about everything from technology to social media, to what we can be doing to improve our environment. And so I'd like to invite you every Wednesday at 3 to stay and watch my show here with Think Tech Hawaii. And I'll see you there. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. We're talking with Holomua Consulting Group and President and Vice President Shannon Edie and Daphne Tong Pave, respectively. Um, and we're just talking about how Hawaii companies can qualify to do federal work. What advice can you give to some companies that are thinking about trying to do federal work? Anything specific? Or? Come talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> or anything no. that they should be thinking about? Definitely do the research and find mm -hmm. out you know, what's out there and have a good understanding of who they are as a company, what it is that they want to sell, mm -hmm. what their capabilities are, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, what their objectives are. The research is particularly important, though. I, like Shannon was saying, some companies come to us, they're like, we'll do anything. What I'm is surprised yeah. that their companies mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's not really how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't offering something already? or. Well, they, they did do their research and realized that the government doesn't really buy what they're what they're, so oh. they're trying to figure out. And I mean, I guess there's nothing wrong with that if you're looking maybe long term at getting into a specific industry. And kind of steering your company right. exactly. in right. that direction. Yeah. Oh. So research, research is important. <laughs> yeah, market research. <laughs> and the Native Hawaiian organizations, is that a specific category? Or yes. Is fall under one of the like disadvantaged or it does yeah so um native entities including native Hawaiian organizations um, can participate in the 8a program um under different rules and they have different benefits as well more benefits mm -hmm. or yeah yes <laughs> more benefits but of course the benefits come with additional uh, requirements and reporting compliance as well as certification requirements but the mm -hmm. benefit primarily is that the company is able to get sole source or directed awards straight from the government agency um, in this case for native hawaiian wow. it's only through the dod but those huh. contracts can be in excess of the caps which are 4.5 Four, and yeah. 6 million depending on what type of contract so a Native wow. Hawaiian organization owned 8A firm can get a contract from the DOD directed or sole sourced to it um, above $6 billion. So they can get sole source from other agencies. It's just that for DOD, there's no threshold. Oh, okay. I see, I see. And, and the difference is that wow. these um, firms that participate in the 8A program are majority owned and controlled by this nonprofit, the NHO. So the theory is that you know the for-profit would then you know push their revenues up to the nonprofit, who then serves the Native Hawaiian community. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. Yeah. And um, there are similar programs for tribally owned companies mm. as well as ANC or Alaska Native Corporation owned companies. And so the huh. the Native Hawaiian organization owned companies fall into a similar category. Okay, and then Holomua would help with that as well? Yes, yeah. So we can, you know, help from, you know, 
the very beginning if that's something they're looking mm -hmm. at. So mm -hmm. setting up the nonprofit, doing all of the corporate documents, assisting with acquiring a firm, setting up the firm. Wow. Um, and then we have clients who are currently in the program so we can help with getting additional companies certified and then maintaining compliance. Uh, so the thing with the application at the NHO um, level is um, eligibility is based on the nonprofit board. So you have a minimum of three. Um, many of them have upwards of three, so say mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. um, so the application is huge because you have <laughs> the individuals on this nonprofit board establishes the eligibility. So they oh. provide personal and financial information wow. in addition to any other owners or managers in the for-profit. So it's a huge application. Wow. And the annual review is pretty taxing too. <laughs> but that's what you guys do. That yeah, is. that is what we do. <laughs> Ooh, that is interesting. Oh, and I wanted to mention you guys were involved with an upcoming conference with the Native Hawaiian Organization Association. Yes. So it that will be on August fifth and sixth, mm -hmm. and it's their first annual business summit or business conference in Hawaii. And a lot of high-ranking SBA officials have committed to being on panels and you know just coming to the conference. So mm -hmm. it's it's a huge opportunity for our community. Mm -hmm. They typically, you know, the focus is generally on the tribally owned companies and the ANC owned companies. So from our perspective, this is huge that the SBA will be attending yeah. you know, this event. Focusing on NHOs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and it's not just for NHOs either. So it's, you know, based on, it's going to be focused on federal contracting. So um, it's a lot of networking, helpful information just about federal contracting, teaming opportunities. I think they have a session on joint ventures. Um, so it'll wow. be helpful for companies that are either in federal contracting, want to get in federal contracting, mm -hmm. as well as Native Hawaiian organizations. Yes. Wow. So I think, yeah, definitely there will be a lot of opportunities for knowledge, but also the networking mm -hmm. opportunities will be great because there will be contracting officers, there will mm -hmm. be other government officials, and there will be uh, representatives from large prime, prime contractors. Yeah, exactly. I saw that. Yeah. Wow, that's, that sounds like a really powerful conference. Yes. It really is. And like Shannon oh. mentioned, they don't normally have these types of conferences in Hawaii, um, especially those focused, uh, you know, ones focused on Native Hawaiians. So it's mm -hmm. a great opportunity. We mm -hmm. encourage people to attend. Okay. Yeah. Where's it going to be held at? It's going to be at the Pacific Beach Hotel. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. August. August 5th and 6th. Okay. So what's next for Holomua Consulting Group? What can <laughs> we look forward to? <laughs> Good oh, question. Yeah, <laughs> anything and everything. <laughs> Probably no. not hiring anytime too soon, right? Or um, possibly. 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 I think we're Great. just trying to keep our eyes and ears open mm -hmm. for someone that might be a good fit mm -hmm. for us. And then just continuing Great. to educate people on federal contracting and the opportunities that are available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah, and we really want to reach, you know, the neighbor islands. Um, so that's why, you know, we're doing the webinar and hope to kind of um, provide more services on the neighbor islands as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We'll help you get the word out. That sounds <laughs> great. Um, yeah, and it'd be great to definitely bring in more federal dollars to Hawaii. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. yeah, we definitely want to help um, local companies take advantage of the opportunities. And like I mentioned before, the government wants to do business with small businesses. Mm -hmm. So anything we can do to help our own local companies take advantage of that, mm -hmm. you know, we want to do that. Okay. Do you have any recommendations for companies on building relationships with potential clients? I would say, you know, attend networking events, join. Um, there is a forum coming up next week through MBDA. Mm -hmm at Honolulu Country Club, and I think that's going to be an opportunity to meet people, contracting officers, then again, the that's NHO great. A conference, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, joining some professional organizations, I would, I would say AFSIA here mm -hmm. locally. Um, that's a big one, yeah. and a lot of people come down for that. Yes. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to travel. You can meet a lot of people here. You can meet a lot of people here. I would definitely say maybe pick one or two events on the mainland, mm -hmm. you know, that that you're, you know will be beneficial. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but go having a plan. You want to have a capability statement. You want to have business cards. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is one of those areas where you need to really be solid on who you are and what, <laughs> what you're, you're providing <laughs> because that's how you are going to develop a relationship with the contracting officer, perhaps, mm -hmm. or an agency official, and then they will remember you down the road. <laughs> so. Especially if you're from Hawaii, right? They can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. It, yes. And there are other resources here too, you know, the SBA, SBDC, mm -hmm. there's PTAC. PTAC. Right. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of the free services that they provide as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. So many opportunities. Um, oh, let us know where we can find out more about Holomua Consulting Group. We have a website. It's www.holomuaconsulting.com. Mm -hmm. We also have a Facebook page and we also have a Twitter feed and it's Holomua underscore LLC. <laughs> but you can get a lot of great information on our website. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. I saw I saw you have a blog and yes, there yeah. was a lot of good stuff on there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of useful information. <laughs> so check that out. It is holomuaconsulting.com. Yes. Um, thank you so much for being with thank us today. You. Yes, thank you. Very interesting. I'm going to get this out there so people can learn more. Um, Thank you, everybody out there, for supporting Hawaii entrepreneurs and the innovation economy. This has been High Growth with HTDC on Think Tech Hawaii. My guests today have been Shannon Eady and Daphne Tong Pave of Holomua Consulting Group, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.